Let's talk about endometriosis. What is endometriosis? Very simply, it's endometrial tissue outside the uterus. All right, well, what is endometrial tissue? Endometrial tissue is composed of partially glandular and partly connective tissue that also has immune properties. And this is why one of the biggest symptoms with endometriosis is chronic inflammation. Uh, pain in the pelvis, pain internally. It also affects your menstrual cycle, causes infertility, painful intercourse, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, the big clue with endometriosis is this right here, part glandular tissue, which means that tissue is highly sensitive to hormones, primarily estrogen. And this is why women who have estrogen dominance have a higher risk of getting this condition. Now, let's just kind of go through the potential causes of this problem, starting at the most obvious, something that you would expose that part of the body to on a routine basis. And I'm talking about a tampon. Well, you might say that that can't be because I use natural cotton. Did you realize that 94% of all cotton grown in the U.S. is GMO? And the type of GMOs that they're using in cotton are the BT version, which basically makes the cotton an insecticide. So you can only imagine what can happen when you expose your body to something that acts as an insecticide. And this is number one. And of course, if you're female and you use tampons, I would recommend only using organic tampons. Now, if you're a guy, you might say, well, uh, I don't have to worry about that. Well, did you realize that they feed GMO cotton to cattle? So these animals are consuming some of this cotton and the byproducts of that could end up on your plate. Unless you do organic beef, grass-fed. Um, if you're doing grass-fed, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not organic because they may do um, grain finishing for four months after the grass-fed period of regular GMO grains. So uh, you definitely want organic. And if possible, you wanna do your meats uh, grass-fed, grass-finished. Very important. The next most important thing to avoid would be dairy products. Uh, why? Because dairy is meant to grow calves. And so milk is composed of a lot of growth hormones. And we already have a growth of an abnormal tissue. So we don't want to add more growth factors to your diet to potentially create a problem with this. So I would go dairy free if you have this condition or if you're estrogen dominant. And one point I want to mention is that chemicals like insecticides, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides mimic estrogen in the body. And that's why GMO is a problem. And this is also why grain-fed animal products, okay, grains are mostly GMO, like soy and corn, are fed to the animals. And if it's not organic, you're getting exposure to the herbicide called glyphosate. So the glyphosate is also going to go into the dairy and it can have an effect on estrogen in the body. And then we get soy, okay? Soy is also estrogenic, uh, especially soy protein isolates, uh, soy uh, oils. So I would definitely avoid soy products. And then we go into GMO foods. The problem is trying to identify them at the grocery store because they don't have to label them as GMO. But if you do organic, you're safe. Then we get grains. Grains are highly inflammatory, not to mention usually they're GMO. Uh, but if you avoid gluten and all grains, your blood sugars will be better. Um, your inflammation will get better. And then we get sugar. Now, a lot of the sugar used in the U.S. is not from cane. It's from beet sugar, which is mostly GMO. So as you can see, we're being exposed to a lot of chemicals indirectly from things that you might not even connect to being a chemical. So this is what I would recommend. Go organic 100%. I would also consume a natural vitamin C complex and a vitamin E complex, including the tocotrienols and the tocopherols. The reason is because there's some really interesting research on animals, not humans, but still, the data uh, shows an improvement in endometriosis using vitamin C and vitamin E. I'll put a link down below. So it potentially can help, uh, especially with the inflammatory conditions and the effect that these antioxidants have um, to soak up some of the free radicals that's generated. 
Selenium is another key mineral to help as an antioxidant. Uh, it's also good as an anti-inflammatory. And then of course, omega-3 fatty acids are also really good to help reduce inflammation. Now there's one last point. There's an enzyme in the body called aromatase, which converts testosterone into estrogen. And this can happen in men and women. And so some of your estrogen, which is creating the dominant situation, could be coming from testosterone. And so one good um, alternative to that would be to take an aromatase inhibitor. And stinging nettle root is one of the best ones. So if you were to take this as a supplement, it probably would help you. All right, so that's my summary and my recommendations for endometriosis. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.